Bulldog Nation. This is Gardner Webb University President Bill Downs. And I'm coming to you today to bring you episode number one of a new series that we're calling First Downs. And this new series allows us to have some conversations with some special people. People who have made Gardner Webb great. People who have made Gardner Webb distinctive. And to share those conversations with you. And so we've got a, a real treat for you today on our first episode. We've got Carly Plentovich Talent, Coach Carly Plentovich Talent, head girls basketball coach here at Shelby High School. Coach, how you doing? I'm feeling good. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate y'all um, doing this with me. It's, it's an honor. It's good to reconnect with you. I'm gonna start with a little bio for all of our folks who are reconnecting with you for the first time in a few years. Uh, first thing is the last name's different, right? That is Everybody correct. Everybody remembers you as Carly Plentovich. Tell us about the talent. Congratulations. Yeah. We knew you had talent, <laughs> uh, but a different talent now, right? Yes, yes. So actually, I graduated on December 12th um, in the afternoon. 2020. That's, yep, 2020. And then later that evening, we had a little friend's Christmas party, and he proposed that same day. So then we got married October 9th of 21, and... Now I'm talent instead of Plenovich. <laughs> Two L's, right? Two L's. Two L's. It's spelled wrong, <laughs> <laughs> which okay. is actually a funny story. Um, when my father-in-law was born, the doctors misspelled his last name. It was originally one L. And it stuck. And it stuck. He didn't want to change it. <laughs> so Carly Plentovich Talent, she's a native of Clearwater, Florida, graduated, as we said, December 2020, a degree in health physical education. Played mm -hmm. four years, right? Correct. Played four years uh, at Gardner-Webb on the women's basketball team, averaged over 10 points per game, scored 1,240 points. Did I get that right? Sure. Sure. I know it's over 1,000. <laughs> 1,240, I checked this morning. She was selected to the all-academic and all-conference teams in the Big South during her last three years at Gardner-Webb. Holds a school record for points in a game, 36, made field goals, 13, and made three-pointers, eight. All right, season number one as head coach at Shelby High School. How's that going? It's been a challenge, I'm not going to lie. Um, I came in with certain expectations because um, I was at a middle school last year. Okay. Now I'm at a high school, and skill-wise, it's a big difference. Um, but there have been a lot of ups and downs that I was not prepared for. Um, but I really do have a good group of girls. I love them. I would do anything that I needed to for them. But there have definitely been some challenges that I was not expecting. Um, but anyone outside who has watched us to play from game one to now, we are a completely different new team. So what was the biggest challenge making the transition from player to coach? Learning how to teach. Um, it's been a long time since I've been at this level. Um, like my mind, things that I think are simple are very complicated to middle school and even high school kids. So it's been very difficult trying to figure out how to put it in words that they can understand. And concepts have to be very simple. So that's definitely been the biggest challenge. Is your on-court demeanor as a player at Gardner-Webb the same as your sideline demeanor as a coach? Are you fired up? Are you calm? <laughs> have you been teed up? Have you been ejected? Tell, give, us, give us a sense of that on-court on demeanor. I, I'm probably a little bit of both. I've never been teed up. Um, I have got a warning. I called a foul for a ref one time, and he just <laughs> he gave me that look, you know, like if you don't back off, you're about to get a technical. Okay. Um, but I am, I'm calm at times, but I really get hype with them. Like if we get an and one, I'm over there flexing with them. Like I'm stomping my feet, trying to get them all hype. Um, but if they're playing good, I'm over there with my arms crossed, just chilling, you know? So it just kind of depends on the atmosphere of the game. So Alex Simmons was your coach at mm -hmm. Gardner Webb. Um, did you get any advice from her? Did you, what, what did you learn from watching her as a coach that you've implemented in your own coaching style? Um, well, actually a lot, of, I guess not a lot, some of the plays that we do are actually plays that we did at Gardner-Webb okay. um, that I really liked doing with her. 
Um, I do a lot of practice drills that we do. I get from her. We have this one layup drill that we used to do. Uh, full court layups. My girls hate it, but it gives us good practice for layups. So um, it's like things like that. Drills, plays are kind of the main things that I got from it. So the women's game, uh, especially in college across the country, has taken off. Yes. I mean, if you think about South Carolina, you think about LSU, you think about Caitlin Clark at Iowa. I mean, you think about Nebraska, what, 15,000 people yeah. packing into the arena to see them knock off Iowa. Has that excitement, has that new level of enthusiasm for the women's game come here and trickle down to the high school level at Shelby? Are you seeing it in the stands? Are you seeing it in the kids? What, what, what's it like? Um, I don't know if it's had a major effect here, uh, but I think this county is also very um, supportive of their sports. So we've always had a decent crowd around us. Um, it's still kind of typical at the end of our games, you start to see the crowd pick up because the varsity boys play after us. Um, but there's really always been a positive atmosphere around even the girls sports here, just because of the county that we live in. We are sports crazy. Very That's much, <laughs> very much. <laughs> um, talking about advice, I'm sure you watch Caitlin Clark mm -hmm. at Iowa. And it's, it's they, the kids these days, they've got a luxury that you don't have. These COVID years, these mm -hmm. extra years. She's sitting here, what advice? She's got the chance to play another year of college. <laughs> yeah. Or to go pro or do whatever. What, what advice would you give her? Um, I would probably say to stay her extra year. Um, because the one thing that I miss is having that team atmosphere. Like, yes, I have my high school girls now. It's great. I love it. But um, there's just something different about being on a team and playing with a group of girls as opposed to coaching it. And then, like, when you go overseas, I'm sure she's going to go in the WNBA. Um, but when you get to that level, there's – a difference like everyone's trying to be their best because they get more money the better they are whereas college you know you have to play as a team like it doesn't necessarily matter what your stats are as long as you're winning you know so just college has a different team atmosphere I feel like than especially overseas gets so shifting back to the high school um, in addition to coaching you're a teacher Mm -hmm. Tell us about what you do uh, when, you, when you take the whistle and you put the whistle on the table. <laughs> so I'm an earth and environmental teacher, um, which is kind of funny because like you said earlier, I majored in health and PE. Um, but I said uh, if I was going to teach anything, it would be science because I feel like that's the next closest thing. So it just kind of, it's crazy how God worked it out, honestly. Um, when I graduated or right before I graduated, an intern, um, an interim position opened up at Burns Middle okay. for um, sixth grade science, which just happens. Shout out to Burns. Exactly, yeah, which just happened to be a lot of earth and environmental stuff. Okay. So I took that, hoping the next year I would get PE, because I made sure the principal knew, like, hey, I want PE. That's what I, that's what I majored in, and didn't work out. So I taught there for two more years, and then. Shelby opened up. So then I made the transition because I knew I wanted to be a high school coach. So I uh, took the spot and now I'm doing ninth grade earth and environmental teaching high school and it's been a great move. It's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate of how it all worked out. Living the dream. Let's think about the bookends of your collegiate career. Okay. We just mentioned it before the camera started a little bit earlier. Your first collegiate game with coach with Alex coach Alex <laughs> her first game as a head coach at Gardner Webb you guys go down to Gainesville Florida mm -hmm. what happened we won <laughs> <laughs> this is the we, University of Florida yes. SEC Gardner Webb goes down there yes knock them off. we beat them by two points and I can see the play in my head my sister had the ball and from my perspective, it looked like she threw up a prayer. And I'm like, Savannah, why did you take that shot? But it went in, so it was one of those, why did you do that? Oh, good shot, good shot. <laughs> Put us up by two points. And I mean, 
that was that's probably my favorite college memory just because it is like the university of florida mm-hmm. like a lot of people don't get a chance to one play at a school that big and then beat them silence the crowd yeah and it was education day to make Ooh, it even better wow. so it was a packed crowd so then at the end of the career It's March 2020, Mm -hmm. and everybody remembers March 2020. We've got, I guess what we called Corona back then, the virus, COVID. You guys are on a four-game winning streak, and you're scheduled to head to Bowie's Creek to play Hampton, I believe it Mm -hmm. was, in the first round of the Big South Conference Tournament. Yep. Did you make it to Bowie's Creek? Yeah, we were in the parking lot when we got the phone call. (laughs) We were there Almost getting ready. The memories of having the season cut short thanks to the virus. That was that was horrible, because not only were we on that that winning streak, but we had just knocked off Campbell, who was the number one team on our senior night. So we were coming in like this is our year, like we are gonna win it, because we were playing so good, and then we were. At the, we were literally at Campbell get, getting ready to shoot to shoot around or practice. I don't remember. And we get the phone call. Well, first off, it was Hampton has backed out. So we were like, yes, like one step closer. Because, I mean, Let's go. Hampton's always a tough game. Right. So we were like, sweet, one step closer. And then we got the phone call, like, nope, tournament's canceled. And I think what frustrated us is, one, we were already on campus. Um, and then the first round had already played. So it was like PC and somebody else. We were like, well, shoot, they've already played. We're already on campus. Like, we've already been exposed to it. Like, let's just play the tournament. (laughs) Which, I mean, (laughs) we know we can't do. Like, I mean, we understand, but it was was frustrating because of the role that we were on. And it was my senior year. We didn't get that back. And that 1,240 points would have grown significantly. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> in that NCAA tournament that you would have had. Yes. So in between, uh, what, what are some of the favorite memories? What, 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 when you were playing for the Running Bulldogs at Garden Whip, was it, was Campbell the nemesis? Who, who did you want to beat the most? Who was the big rival? When it first started out, it was Liberty. Oh, yeah. Liberty was always the top seed. Okay. Liberty was always up there in the top. Right. So that was just who we wanted to be. Okay. And we got them one time. Did you? At home. I think it was our freshman year maybe, or sophomore, I don't know, but we did end up beating them. But then once Liberty transferred out, oh, I would say probably High Point or Campbell. Um, Choices. I say Campbell because we had some friends on that team. And so we just wanted to beat them. And then High Point was always a really competitive game. So it was just a, it was a good confidence booster when we could beat either of those teams. So you played in a different era. You played before transfer portals, right? It's... I mean, you could transfer, but but you had to sit, right? Yes. So what, what's your assessment of, of the ease with which people can pack up and leave teams? I think it's crazy. I mean, you get, you get four years to play. Like, if – why – I think a lot of kids now, they have dreams to play at these big schools. And so when they have a chance to go play, they're not thinking about um, the atmosphere of the team. They're not thinking about the fact that they're probably not going to play their first two years. They just get to say, ooh, I get to play at Duke or I get to play at Florida. So then they get there and they sit the bench and they're not redshirting. So that's a whole year of your eligibility down the drain that you just didn't get to play. And so then they try to transfer to a smaller school where they'll get to play. And then, "Mm, I don't like something the coach said or whatever. Just a lot of people are sensitive. So then they try to transfer again. And it's just ridiculous. And I mean, honestly, it's getting like that at the high school level too. Like kids are transferring all over the place, even here in Cleveland County. They don't like the coach, so they transfer to the good school. So it's ridiculous at all levels how easy people can transfer with little to no consequences. Name, image, likeness. What do you think about that? I don't know. I go back and forth on it. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for college players to get their name out there, make some cash, but the amount that they're getting is mind-blowing. Like, I'm... 
I'm getting my master's right now, and I had to do a project on name, image, and likeness. And I saw something that said, in order to get like a good college quarterback, you have to have like a million dollars. Like, Billion these seven. are college kids who have never learned how to budget money, who don't know how to handle anything. They're going out there getting Jaguars and just because they can. Like, college kids don't need a million dollars. <laughs> like, it's great to set them up for the future. You think they'll ever get that genie back in the bottle? Or you think that's just the new normal? I think it's the new normal. It's out there, it's not gonna come back. People aren't gonna let it. So you mentioned your sister earlier. You mm -hmm. were the, the dynamic duo, uh, twins. How were your games different? Did y'all you play different styles? Yes. Um, I, was, I was obviously the shooter. Um, she could shoot the ball too, but I always say she was kind of a more all around player. Um, she did play the point position, which helped. So if you look at our all around stats, honestly, hers were better. I just scored more points because I was the shooter and it was her job to drive and kick the ball. Um, but she was, she was a little bit more aggressive offensively. Um, I was more laid back and I, I made my shots easier. She was able to, I guess, go in. I don't want to say force it, but she was just more aggressive offensively a little bit more. She drove a little bit more than I did. Um, defensively, I usually guarded the better player, but she was right behind me. Like she was the next go-to. So, I mean, we had similar styles, but there was still kind of a big difference. And then plus being the righty and the lefty, that makes a big difference too. Not everybody knew that. Now, yes. <laughs> your, mom, your mom sat behind us. Uh, she cheered loudly for both of you. Yes. Just say, uh, that was um, a, a loud cheer. She's hard session. to miss. <laughs> <laughs> so your sister went on to play? Correct. Tell, tell us where, where she went to play. So she started in Lithuania. She played there for two years. And then after Lithuania, she went to Sweden for a year. And then after Sweden, she went to Hungary and played about half a season, I guess, and just wasn't enjoying it anymore. Kind of realized, you know, she wanted to start a life, settle down. Basketball's not gonna be there forever. So she just decided to come home after that half season with Hungary and now she's home and starting life. There you go. <laughs> Best non-basketball memory of your time at Gardner Webb? Well, can it involve my basketball sure, teammates? Sure, <laughs> we're flexible. <laughs> this is your show. <laughs> we went to, oh man, I can't even remember the place, but it's in Charlotte. It's got, oh, the Whitewater Rafting Center. Sure. We went there with student services one year okay. and I went with two of my teammates and we just, we had a blast. I had never done some of that stuff before. They had zip lining. We jumped off some really tall cliffs. We went um, mountain biking and I absolutely wiped out, but it was, that was probably the most fun that we had outside of basketball. How do you think you grew the most? It could be basketball, it could be spiritually, it could be academically. What, the maturation process of, of doing your years at Cardinal Web? Um, I think it helped me become more independent, I think. Um, because as you know, our mom followed us up. <laughs> so she was, she was always with us. And so by going out of state, that really helped me and my sister both grow up. But then when we split, um, that kind of helped us even more become just more individuals. So like we weren't just like Carly and Savannah. Right. Like we became Carly. Did, did and that then, get to you after a while? Did that, did that ever bother you? Uh, is yes. it tough to be a twin? No. The only time it bothered me is when I felt like people should know the difference between us. That's the only time. Like, we've known you for a few years. Like, you're still getting us mixed right. up. Like, that's the only time it really bothered. Other than that, we both just answered to each other's names. Like, one time, um, I was walking to class. And me and my sister, we had just had a conversation about her class. And one of her classmates came up to me thinking I was her. And we just held a conversation about her class. <laughs> I was like, well, thankfully we just had a conversation because he had no idea. 
I was Savannah for about two minutes. <laughs> and I'm sure everybody asked you this, did y'all ever plot some kind of strategy where you, where you <laughs> did that intentionally and, and you had a great fun? We actually did not. You did we were we are both very much rule followers. Okay. Um, we had thought about it, but we were nervous. And honestly, we had most of the same classes growing up. Okay. So we never really had a chance to. And by the time we did have different classes, like the teachers knew us because we had an older brother. So we never got we never got the courage to do it. I'll say that. <laughs> All right, so you told me before the cameras came on that you've been to one game so far for the Gardner-Webb women's basketball team. Yeah. New coach, new era, uh, new team. Struggling a little bit with transition. What advice would you give the players on that team as, as they try to, to, to build the program their way? Yeah. Um, I know it's hard because everybody wants to win. And... Um, it's been a long season, but my biggest advice is just to stick it out. Like, especially if you like the coach and you like the girls that you play with, stick it out because they came in at such a hard year. They came in with three players and everyone else just had to be quickly recruited. And so Coach Merritt had a tough year. And so I feel like he hasn't really had a chance to kind of prove who he is as a coach. And so if they like him, if they like the atmosphere that he has created, stick it out. Give him a chance to build it up to how he wants it to be because I think he is a great coach just from what I've seen. And they've, they've won some, some big games. Mm -hmm. They've come close in some big games. They took high point to the limit the other day. How do you talk to your current team in the locker room after a big win and after a close loss? Yeah, um, after a big win, we just, we get hype. Like we won, we won a game by two points a few weeks ago to a team that we got blown out by like 32 the first time. And we just, yeah, like they played fantastic. And we came in yelling, screaming, banging on the locker rooms or banging on the lockers. And I just told them like I, how proud I was of them. Like this is what we did good. Um, and I focused on that stuff. And then after a big loss, um, I've been very fortunate to have a very um, experienced assistant coach. And he's been a big help dealing with losses that are by two points or something. And he always told me they're already frustrated. They're already defeated because they played so hard and came up short. So he always... <laughs> no, he always he always told me, he said, focus on what they did good yeah. because they're already frustrated. They don't want any more negativity. So I always just try to lift them up like I'm proud of how y'all played hard on defense. Like we just, maybe we missed a few shots here and, the, here and there and missed some free throws, but at the end of the day, we played good all around. We just came up short. It happens. Can't win them all. <laughs> and then you go home and then you, uh, <laughs> you say what you need to say. Yes, and then I rant to my husband. <laughs> All right, so um, give me two pitches here at, at the end. Uh, make, make a pitch for Shelby High School and Shelby High School basketball. Why, 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 why should people want to come here? Why, why should families want to send their kids to Shelby High and in particular play for you? Yeah, so um, I'll start off with saying my first experience at Shelby. Like when I came here, I was so welcomed. The kids are fantastic. Like they are just, I don't, I don't even know how to put it into words about how easy it is to be here for me. Um, all of the coaches from the, other, from the other sports, they have welcomed me in. Like I am, I'm able to go have a conversation with anyone, but like, hey, let me get your opinion on this. And it has been just such an easy transition because of how welcoming everything is. Um, from a coaching standpoint, why would you want to come play for me? Because um, I love my girls. I would do anything that I need to to help them get through life, to help them get to the next level. I am going to make them play hard, but I'm going to let them enjoy the game of basketball too because basketball's not gonna be there forever. Mm. So I want them to, yes, get better, but I want them to have fun while they're doing it. 
And so we have a fun atmosphere. And it, I mean, I think just the biggest thing is just how much I care for them is if, if they want to play for a coach that um, is going to get them better but cares, this is the school. And it's all around. It's not just to play for me. I've got that vibe and experience from all the other coaches here. So what's the pitch for Gardner-Webb? Would you send uh, would you send people that you meet, young people, to go to Gardner-Webb? I would. Um, and the main thing is the faculty. I will uh, – I still have – three people that I consistently talk to. Um, and they have made a world of a difference. Um, one of them is a health and PE teacher. One of them is a science teacher. One of them is somebody I actually didn't have as a teacher. One of my teammates did, and I got connected that way. Um, so I can go to the one for science advice. I go to one for basketball advice. I go to one just for life. You know, I mean, just the faculty is so supportive. The student body is supportive and great. Like, I've seen videos on social media of them at the sporting events, how much it has grown, especially since I've been there. It wasn't like that when I was there. I wish it was. Wow, well, I'm proud. <laughs> but, I mean, just the support that everybody gives, it's, it's, it's really awesome. And that's the one thing that I truly loved about Gardner-Webb. So here's the exit, the final exit question, gazing into the crystal ball. You said basketball's not going to be there forever. It could be mm -hmm. for a coach. Yeah, could be. Carly Plentovich, talent, 10 years down the road. What do you want to be doing? <laughs> that is a question I have asked myself a lot recently. Um, I go back and forth about possibly being a college coach one day. My husband wants me to become a college coach because from his point of view, it's just more entertaining. Sure. You know, college players versus high school players, Still. the skill level, yeah, it's just a lot more entertaining. Um, so I could be a college coach. I could become an athletic director one day. That's what I'm getting my master's okay. for. So who knows? I could be both, you know, but athletic director at a high school, high school coach, I don't know. I don't know. But there will be a change within, within the next few years, for sure. Whatever you do, we know you'll be great. And uh, we hope you continue to spread the good news about Gardner Webb. Coach Carly, thanks for being the first <laughs> guest on First Downs. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank so you for having me. It's been, been great visiting with you. Thanks to everybody out there for watching and listening. We will continue our series of conversations with amazing Gardner Webb people. So you stay tuned. Thanks. God bless.